much for joining us. Uh, my name is James Chang, and I am director of the Duck Career Network uh, program here at the University of Oregon Alumni Association. And it's my pleasure to be here with you, uh, at, along with a colleague and two of our uh, amazing alums who will be joining us and sharing some of their uh, career experiences and their uh, school-to-work transition as well as work-to-work -work transition. So uh, I know you're in for a, a treat today. Uh, let me also have my colleague Camille uh, introduce herself. Hi everyone, I'm Camille, the program coordinator for the Duck Career Network, and I'm a double duck, uh, 2006 and 2015 grad, and very excited about the topic today. So welcome to the program. Thanks, Camille. So before we go to our featured speaker, I just want to uh, emphasize that this is part of the Duck Career Network program. Uh, our program at the Alumni Association is charged with activating the entire network of ducks, the entire alumni network, to be a career resource for one another. Uh, we really hope to embody the spirit and, and, and sort of uh, highlight the spirit of Ducks Helping Ducks for Career Success. And our two featured alumni speakers today are just perfect examples of that. Uh, so without any further ado, uh, I would love to have them introduce themselves. And then uh, the format of this webinar is I'll just ask a number of questions to each of our speakers. Uh, and through their uh, reflection and their answers, I hope that those of you who are watching will be able to get some uh, takeaways as you yourself are trying to find that more ideal career path for yourself. So um, why don't we start with Boaz. Uh, Boaz, could you please start uh, with an introduction and uh, I'll let us know uh, what you studied and, and where you're currently. Uh, sure. Um, my name is Boaz Hillebrand. I studied Japanese languages and literature at the uh, U of O, graduated in 2009. And right now I am a uh, business intelligence analyst at Nordstrom Corporate Offices in downtown Seattle. Thank you so much, Boaz. And Gloria, could you please introduce yourself? Yeah, uh, my name is Gloria Kim. I graduated from U of O in 2010 with a BA in political science, and I am now currently a staff accountant at a tech startup in San Francisco called AppDirect. Awesome. And thank you so much for joining us. I love the fact that we have the West Coast pretty much covered. So um, to, to get the conversation started, uh, could you tell us a little bit about how you even chose the University of Oregon uh, for the school that you went to? So Gloria, maybe you can start with that. Yeah, um, for me, I think it was more of how I could choose not to go to U of O. Uh, I grew up in the area. I went to high school in Eugene, and so I was constantly always surrounded in a community of, you know, duck pride and spirit, um, which was unusual because I actually came from a family that supported the beavers. <laughs> I did get a lot of flack when I decided to go to U of O, but it was logically also a great decision for me because I was getting a top-notch education for in-state tuition, and I was getting academic scholarships. Um, so it was definitely a no-brainer to pick U of O. I'm glad you found us, even <laughs> after all the other uh, exploring of other options. Uh, Boaz, tell us how you got to the U of O, please. Sure. Uh, I guess fairly similar to Gloria. I'm I'm a native Oregonian, so it was uh, not a tough decision to make um, to stay in state and get that nice in state tuition, uh, uh, you know, discount there. And, and uh, uh, I think that honestly, like it, it was a choice between uh, the U of O and maybe OSU. And I just I like the culture in, in Eugene and at the U of O, so it was kind of the deciding factor for me. Awesome, awesome. Glad to have you both as docs. Um, so again, starting with maybe your, your college experience, uh, can you tell us a little bit about how, how you went about choosing a major? Uh, so Boaz, please start. <laughs> sure. Um, well, uh, I was, I had actually been, uh, before, during, uh, before attending the UFO, I had gone to culinary school and I had been uh, a chef and baker for, for quite a while. Um, but I think that I've always had a fairly inquisitive mind, and I like to gather gather new new data points and new information. So um, Japanese to me was kind of fascinating in that it was so so unknown, and I just gravitated towards that because every everything that I learned was kind of a completely new context, a new a new thing. So. Did that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So when you started at the U of O, you were pretty sure that Japanese was the area that you want to focus on, so there wasn't as much exploration of what else might you want to do. No, no, I, I okay. had, yeah, 
pretty much decided. Awesome, great. Uh, and Gloria, how did you choose your major? Um, so I'm similar to Boaz. I went and declared um, as a political science major. Like I just knew from day one that's what I was going to major as, and I didn't really deviate from that or explore other career options. Um, I did have a brief moment where I registered for a psychology minor and very shortly thereafter dropped it and then picked up a communication studies minor instead, which I did actually uh, complete and stick with. So um, looking back, though, in retrospect, I definitely do wish I had explored other options and not kind of boxed myself in, but at the time I felt that I didn't have a choice, um, which is kind of silly now when I look back at it because I should have been making my major work for me, not trying to work for my teacher. I know hindsight is always so clear, yeah. but when you're in the moment, it, you, you make the best decisions that you can. Yeah. Um, so it, it's, it's neat to hear both of you had a specific major in mind that you were excited and passionate about. If you could uh, think back to when you were still in school, um, how did you view that first job after graduation. So, you know, with that Japanese major, with that poli sci major, at the time, what did you envision yourself doing in that first job um, after graduating? Uh, and maybe we can start with Gloria. <laughs> Uh, so I definitely obviously thought I would stick with the political career path, and I actually even had um, an internship promised to me in D.C. by congressman, so I definitely thought that's obviously the route I'm going to go. And um, Before I graduated, I realized I didn't want to do that anymore and found myself actually working retail for about a year after graduation. And I definitely, for there was moments where I felt you know, I was failing or my degree had failed me or, you know, so forth because I had this notion that I had to have a shining brand new career, you know, right off the bat when really me and a lot of my, you know, uh, colleagues, um, a lot of my classmates, we were all in the same boat. So it wasn't really fair for myself to, you know, for me to hold myself to this standard. So, um, Absolutely. So can you tell us a little bit more? I think you, you uh, made reference to wanting to work in politics, but then you realized that wasn't for you. Could you share a little bit more about what was that aha moment of, oh, uh, maybe not? <laughs> yeah, it was actually my junior year. I was involved in an ASUO election at the U of O, and I realized this life isn't for me. The whole uh, the drama behind campaigning, the actual politics of it all made me actually very, uh, it, was, it was emotionally taxing. And I realized that's not the kind of situation or lifestyle I want to put myself in. And for, I was very lost after that because for my entire life, I was so certain this is what I wanted to do. And so it was a very uh, pivotal moment when I realized I can't do this. Like, it doesn't make me happy. So. Okay. Great, thank you for sharing that. Um, so Boaz, yeah, can you tell us about when you were in school studying Japanese, enjoying the study of it, but what were you thinking or, or envisioning uh, beyond graduation with that major? Um, I think that my, my experience is probably very similar to, to Gloria's. It, sound, it resonates well with me in that I didn't, uh, I, I think I just assumed that um, I would go to Japan and, and I, like a lot of people who, who are interested in, in, in Japan, maybe teach English there. Um, but that, 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 as you put it, like that aha moment came when I was going into my senior year and I, I spent a, the summer studying abroad there in Tokyo. And, and I mean, I know you can't see it on the camera, but I am, I'm six foot eight, you know, the, the, I'm two sizes too large for that country. You know, I was, I was on the, uh, the subways there and I literally had to, had to hunch over and I thought, you know, I, I, although I'm fascinated with this whole culture with the, like I was saying, the, um, picking up new experiences, there's no way that I could actually live there in, for a sustained period of time. Um, so after that, I, I, I think I went, after I graduated, I went back to what I, what I had been doing before, which is, which is baking and, and working in the culinary field. Um, so yeah, uh, that's, that was my path out of graduation. Awesome. 
Awesome. Again, it's sort of when you're in the moment, you know, then you have to figure yeah. things out. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so let's fast forward and then rewind a little bit. But um, can you talk? Uh, I, I'd love to. For, I'd love for each of you to talk about what you're currently doing, and then I'll ask a follow-up question about sort of how you got here. But um, Boaz, can you tell us about what you're doing? I understand your title is business intelligence analyst at Nordstrom, but if you could help maybe take that apart and uh, help us see what we would see if we were sort of, you know, on the wall just watching you through a, a, a day or, or a week. Sure. Um, so I work in the in the, uh, the HR department. So a lot of what I do has to do with answering questions that uh, HR managers and, and other business managers have about HR questions. So in, in pursuit of answering those questions, I do a lot of um, database queries and, and design of Program, programs for software. Like, uh, I run a lot of SQL. <laughs> so anybody, anybody who's familiar with that, yes, I do lots of SQL. Um, I also uh, do a fair amount of coding. I'm, I'm learning how to program uh, in the R language in Python. And um, so kind of a little bit of odd jobs and a little bit of a jack of all trades when it comes to just answering questions with data. Okay. And so maybe to follow your story a little bit more, when I think of you being a you know, past culinary uh, aficionado and then studying Japanese, um, and then, okay, you're now into SQL surveys of, of <laughs> sure. data. You know, can you help connect how uh, your past actually does connect to where, where you are now? Sure. Um, I guess that doesn't really make uh, – it, it's not immediately obvious how that go, one goes into the other, right? Um, so I guess I have to backtrack a little bit. And after I graduated from the U of O, I, like, as I was saying, I, I went back to my first love, culinary work and, and baking. And, and I knew that I wanted to, um, to go on to graduate school, so I was thinking to myself, well, what do I want to study here? You know, what, what, what do I think is important to me and what do I think I could – make a career out of. And I wound up at um, NYU studying in their, uh, in their food studies uh, graduate program. So I actually also have a master's in uh, food systems and policy. And I thought that I would go into maybe, you know, working in the policy, policy field, helping to make uh, maybe agricultural policy or, you know, local, local food systems policy. And it turns out that uh, um, jobs in that area are Few and far between, a little harder to come by than you might imagine. So casting around and kind of, I, I, I went back and did some some deep thinking about what it is that I that I'm good at and what I feel passionate about. It. And and I think I hinted at it earlier that I really like picking up information and um, looking looking at something from one point of view and then and then turning it sideways and looking at it from another point of view and then you know turning it back over to another side and looking at it from that point of view. And, and being able to explain explain what something really is from various points of view. And so that, that led me into uh, studying um, data. I started taking some, some online courses about data science and that sort of thing. And it really just, it kind of just struck me. I, you know, I, I more or less fell in love with that. And then I, uh, I applied to Nordstrom for a, um, a job here in their HR on a data team. and. Fortunately, I got the job, and I just kind of have been going with it. Fantastic. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and Gloria, can we uh, hear a little bit more about your story? So uh, you mentioned you're a staff accountant with AppDirect. Tell us a little bit more about what you do, um, you know, on, on typical days and weeks. Um, you know, I'll first preface this with saying uh, I definitely had misconceived notions about accounting for a long time. So definitely never thought this was a career option or path for me. Um, but then I came to realize it's not just all about math. There's a lot of working with, you know, a lot of Excel work, working with a lot of data. You get actual, you know, implementation projects, which, you know, can really uh, break up monotony of a, you know, standard office uh, desk job. Um, and then also I get to work with, you know, every team in my company, which is Something I always loved about politics is, you know, uh, interacting with all different teams, people, so forth, and, you know, accounting is a 
role where everyone in the company needs to talk to you <laughs> so at some point or another. So that's been a, that's been a nice to kind of be able to wear different hats still um, and not be you know relegated to a specific uh, type of role um, per se. So. Excellent, excellent. So maybe just in terms of proportion, could you share with us in an average, let's say, week, what percentage of your time is with people? What percentage of your time is looking at Excel spreadsheets or data? Uh, and what percentage of your time would be other things that we don't typically associate with the life of someone who's in accounting or financial services? Because I agree, there's a lot of people who have certain preconceived notions of what accountants do, and um, this I, I love how uh, you know you're, you're you're showing how there's different aspects of it that you know was a pleasant surprise for you. Yeah, definitely. Um, I would say at least fifty percent of my time is Excel work and working with our ERP system, um, and also like our uh, you know credit card companies, the banks. So, forth. so I work with a lot of external uh, people and uh, teams as well, which is always great um, to get exposure to that. Um, and then internally, probably 25% of the time, get a lot of emails, a lot of Slack messages, hangout messages. <laughs> there's, you know, 10 different ways for people to come find me and talk to me. So <laughs> um, there's always that. Um, and then the other 25% of the time is uh, probably just random things that <laughs> will come up, things that even I some initially will not know how to handle. So there's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, opportunities and times where I have to think quickly on my feet, um, things that aren't standard, but it's always great to have to do something new. So um, like recently, um, our company just implemented uh, a new uh, expense reporting system. So um, that was a great deal of pro uh, project management work, which is something I don't typically do. But great experience, you know, a lot of new skills, definitely uh, honed and acquired there. So <laughs> wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. So you know, I, I'm thinking from the perspective of people who are watching the webinar, you know, some of them are just about to graduate or just graduated and they're still trying to find their path. Um, you know, others may have, have, you know, a handful of years of experience or maybe even more, but they're trying to do a career shift. Um, in general, I would love to just have each of you share uh, maybe one or two pieces of, pieces of advice uh, for success based on what you've experience um, and maybe connected to that even if you can include a reflection on when you think back to your especially undergraduate years um, you know what do you think you really got out of it right some people think oh you know your undergraduate degree is all about getting that job uh, but as we've learned no <laughs> you know uh, you know how you find your job is really a packaging many many different things and your major and your studies could be part of it but yeah I'd love to have you share maybe one or two pieces of advice uh, particularly your reflection about what education really is about and what you got from your four years at the U of O um, so I'll, I'll let either Boaz or Gloria chime in whoever feels more comfortable why don't you go ahead Gloria um, so I'd say some of the most important things that I learned from my undergrad years at U of O was uh, definitely some, a lot of soft skills. I think people are so focused on learning um, hard skills, like, you know, perhaps uh, things like um, specific to their major that they don't realize there's a lot of other skills that can really supplement that. So for me, like my poli sci major, definitely not relevant to uh, accounting at all, but I definitely learned how to communicate more effectively, which helped me in turn interview better, which turned out to be very crucial in trying to get jobs um, because they don't always necessarily care what your grades were or how well you did in school, things like that, but they really care about how you're going to get along with the team, you know, are you a hard worker, are you presenting yourself well as someone that they want to work long term with. So soft skills for my major were definitely out and key and also networking. Um, that's actually how I got into uh, accounting and finance was uh, I initially got a referral from someone who was working at the Levi's Finance Center in Eugene, actually, and they remembered that um, I spoke Korean and Spanish, which were two languages that they were trying to fill at that 
global finance help. And so that's how I first got my job in accounting and finance. And then from there, it was actually a referral from a friend from U of O who got me this job here at, uh, at Direct in San Francisco. So networking is also very key. <laughs> I love those examples. So uh, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Bo asked if you could share uh, your, your reflection, your advice. Uh, we'd love to hear it. Sure. Um, wow, where to begin? Uh, <laughs> so about... A, about the time at U of O, um, I think that, I mean, we, I think that the, the story that is often told in, in our culture is that you, you, you graduate from high school and you have a pretty good idea of what you want to study and what kind of career you want to have. And then you go to college and then you, you study that thing and you figure out how to do it and then you do it for the rest of your life. And um, I think that that's, that's, that's a fairly, like, that's a narrow story. It, it excludes a lot of people like me. So. Um, I think that in my time at U of O, I, the thing that I got out of it was more, as they say, learning how to learn, like figuring out what, what kinds of things, uh, what kind of skills you can, you can pick up to make it possible to do the other things that you want to do in life. Um, and then I think that afterwards, the, the biggest kind of mind changer that I, that I had was, um, I learned that it's not, necess it's not necessarily that you uh, go to a job and say like, oh, I, I have these skills, you should hire me. It's figuring out what skills you have that are desirable and figuring out how to, how to make those applicable to a career that you want to have. So if you, you know, no matter, no matter whether you're a soft skills person or hard skills person, no matter what industry you want to go into, there is some, crop, some, uh, some matching there that, that is possible and figuring out how to sell that matching is, is a really key thing. Excellent. And I think that's, that's a huge, huge uh, takeaway. Um, you could have all this uh, areas of knowledge and expertise, but if you don't articulate how it's relevant to the employer, they don't see your value. So, you know, I think that's a transition that we all need to make. And I think especially for students who study liberal arts, um, it's, it's a little bit more challenging. But I think if people are prepared to do that or prepared or simply know that they have to do that, hopefully they'll be more prepared uh, and, and uh, find that right place. So again, excellent advice. So as, as we start sort of nearing the, the end of this webinar, um, I'd like to go to maybe something a little bit more general. Um, but especially as people graduate, uh, there's, there's what society says, you know, defines success. And maybe it's money, maybe it's your title, maybe it's the company you align with. Um, but especially having been out of school for a little bit, um, I'd love to hear how you individually sort of define, you know, what makes you happy, what makes you su successful today. Um, and then if, if, if you can share it in perspective to what you thought uh, would be success as you finish graduation, as you, you know, graduated from the U of O, uh, compared to what you think of it right now uh, with the benefit of hindsight. Um, so maybe, uh, since because I see you smiling, Boaz, <laughs> maybe uh, we, you could kick, kick off this uh, response. Sure. I mean, obviously, so, so when I was, I'm, I mean, I'm here because I'm in a different job than I thought I would be in when I graduated. So, so that, that path to, to realizing success was, was not a straight one for me. Um, so I thought that I would be, you know, I, I would get a job somehow related to, to Japanese and that would lead me down a path where I was working for a company where, you know, something having to do with Japanese language was a part of their business. And um, so it took me, I mean, for a long time, I, I felt like I wasn't succeeding. Like it, all these things that, that I thought that I had in mind for myself were not part of my life. And, and um, so I think the, the, the change came when I, when, I re, when I was able to figure out how to do more of what I, what I love doing. And I, I think that's, I, it sounds so trite and sort of like uh, bland, but I, I appreciate that every day I get to, to essentially do something that is fun. And that, that is a driver of success for me. That, I mean, I have already succeeded, right? Like I, I get to come to work and do something that I find meaningful and, and, uh, and useful and, and fun. So <laughs> my, my idea of success is just that I get to continue doing what I do right now. Excellent. 
Thank you. Uh, and Gloria. Um, I'll definitely uh, go back to how I worked in retail for a year after graduation and how I did not feel like a success. Um, I actually felt like a failure for a long time, especially um, for me, uh, coming from my uh, cultural background, my family also was not supportive. You know, I did not understand why I did not get um, a career right off the bat after the graduation. And so that was really hard to deal with for a long time. But over time, while I was working retail, I came to really appreciate it. Um, I do think I learned a lot of stuff there um, and had experiences that helped definitely set me up for success later on. Um, I definitely uh, <laughs> learned a lot of humility, first of all, and stopped tying my worth and success to something relevant to my major because for a long time, I only looked for other jobs that were related to my major and realized that wasn't going to be a path that led me to something more successful or something that made me more happy. Um, and nowadays, I try to keep my definition of success inclusive of only me, myself, and I, and I try not to include other people, other variables. Um, I ask myself, you know, like, did I grow this past year? Did I learn something new? Am I learning new skills? Am I still competitive? If I can answer yes to those questions, personally for me, I consider that success. Um, I apply these benchmarks, you know, for myself uh, in and out of the workplace. So, so, you know, I'm not someone who's fully focused on my career. I can be happy outside of the workplace as well. And so um, that's what I would consider success. Wonderful. And I just want to put it out there. The reason I was so excited to have both of you tell your story is because I see both of you as being great successes and great models uh, for other ducks to learn from. So, again, um, just wanted to slip that in. So uh, maybe uh, as, as, again, as I wrap up the program, um, Gloria, you're in the San Francisco Bay Area, and it's a place that many of our alums um, either want to go or some of them are returning to. And then Boaz, I would say mm -hmm. behind, you know, I think the three main um, metropolitan areas for ducks is Bay Area, Portland, and Seattle. So, of course, you know, Boaz being in Seattle, um, you know, uh, I, you know, I would love to have you uh, talk a little bit more about, you know, what kind of a duck community do you, do you see in the Bay Area and also in Seattle? Um, how easy or difficult is it to, you know, keep in touch with other ducks if you're looking for them? Um, or, you know, maybe uh, even if you want to slip in advice for those ducks who are moving to the Bay Area or Seattle, um, any tips that you might have for them. But um, I think any, any insight you can share, I think, could help people who are thinking of um, moving to where you are. So maybe for this one, uh, Gloria, if you wouldn't mind kicking this one off. Yeah, uh, I definitely never thought I'd move to San Francisco, <laughs> uh, but here I am. And I gotta say, I was genuinely surprised by how many uh, ducks are out here. I never realized how many Bay Area people actually go to U of O and then end up back in the Bay Area. So they are always a great network to stay in contact with. Um, I also didn't realize that at first when I joined after us that there were half a dozen other duck alumni here too, all from different years. So it was really nice to, uh, discover that, uh, you know, I wasn't alone and there are ducks in surprising places. Um, recently, we uh, signed on with a travel agency and their VP of sales also does alumni. <laughs> We're just kind of everywhere and so it's really cool to see that and um, you never know who you're going to run into in San Francisco. So uh, outside of the duck network, I think uh, SF is just a great place to meet people. You know, sometimes even your Uber or Lyft driver is someone, you know, who is trying to get a startup off the ground or something like that. So uh, definitely a great uh, place to be if you're trying to meet someone in the tech community. Thank you, Gloria. And Boaz, if I said insight about Seattle. Uh well, don't be scared of the Huskies is number one thing. Uh, but uh, other than that, I, I think that my main advice is that it's it's a lot like Eugene, but bigger. Um, the, a lot of people here are very similar to the kinds of people you might meet around the U of O. Um, and if you're if you're looking to get in touch with people from the U of O, I mean, if you if you don't if you feel like you don't have a network that is uh, already set up in Seattle, I would suggest that you. I mean, the social media is a great thing. Look on LinkedIn, look on, look on Facebook. You can always find people who, 
who went to the U of O who are in a big city on the West Coast like Seattle. And it's if if my experience tell, is any guide, um, people in, in Eugene and from Eugene and who have gone to the U of O are very, uh, very friendly no matter where they are. Excellent. So I think on, on that note, I'd love to wrap this up. Gosh, uh, Boaz and, and Gloria, uh, you have confirmed my feeling that you were the exact people I wanted to tell you. I wanted your stories to be told and for, for uh, others to learn from your experience. So once again, on behalf of the Alumni Association, on behalf of the U of O, uh, thank you for representing Duck so well in San Francisco and also in, in Seattle. Um, I hope our paths cross, you know, in person. Um, um, you know, because I am fortunate enough to be able to travel to, to those cities uh, for work and also for fun. Uh, and definitely the next time you're on campus, please look me and Camille up. We would love to buy a cup of coffee, treat you to lunch or dinner, uh, because, again, you, you are modeling the uh, ducks helping ducks spirit that we